I have an idea I want to tell you about. It's another little piece of evidence that there really were once ancient civilizations that are now entirely lost to us. Atlantis is the first that comes to mind, of course, but I have another idea about Atlantis. Our search for Plato's huge island continent in the middle of the Atlantic has led us away from looking at evidence of other ancient civilizations. So I use Atlantis as a generic term for any prehistoric civilization that was wiped out in a cataclysmic event. I think I have a little noted piece of that puzzle, and that's what I want to talk to you about now. 12,900 years ago, close to Plato's time frame for the end of Atlantis, scientists tell us that a huge asteroid, comet, or even a piece of a supernova entered our atmosphere and began to heat to unbearable temperatures. It exploded into pieces high above the Great Lakes region and carried on in a southeasterly direction. Thousands of these pieces plowed into the earth along the Atlantic seaboard concentrated mainly in the Carolinas. Here's an image from Google Earth. This area is just a few miles north and west of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. These oblong depressions are called the Carolina Bays or the Carolina Crater Fields, and they appear as if they were trenched by a group of bodies all hurtling in the same direction. Draw a line that follows their orientation and pull back. Assume that the core of the body carried on until it hit the earth somewhere in what is now the Caribbean Sea, possibly even creating that sea, and scattering pieces of land into the islands of the Lesser Antilles. This literally earth-shaking event resulted in our most recent mass extinction. The mastodon, the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger, and other large animals called megafauna disappeared in a flash. But what does this have to do with an ancient civilization in the Pacific? Let me start with Easter Island. There are some unexplained phenomena there, aside from the iconic Moai statues that we associate with the place. Easter Island is one of the remotest inhabited specks of land on Earth. It lies fully 2,200 miles off the coast of South America. That's a long stretch of ocean, and Easter Island is very tiny. Yet, the two are strangely somehow connected. When the first European explorers stumbled upon the island on Easter Day in 1722, they found some astonishing connections with the South American Andes. The Easter Islanders had the sweet potato, the totora reed, and the bottle gourd. These plants all come from the Andes. What were they doing on Easter Island? Even more astonishing were the stone walls. These are stone walls around Cusco, Peru. Notice the close, mortarless fit and the random sizes. Now look at this wall from Easter Island. The work isn't as fine as that around Cusco, but the similarities are obvious. How could this be? Nowhere else on earth are there walls like these. Did ancient people of Peru sail such vast distances? If they even tried, it would have been an astonishing piece of good luck for them to come upon tiny Easter Island. There is a simpler explanation, but it requires some out-of-the-box thinking. Look at this picture of the Pacific seafloor west of Peru. You see that connection? The yellow line between the two red dots? It's called the Nazca Ridge. It bisects the Nazca Plate and it runs directly from Peru to Easter Island. Now it's underwater, but maybe that was not always the case. If even part of the Nazca Ridge were above water, there would have been a relatively easy island-hopping sail between the two. But what could have caused the Nazca Ridge to sink hundreds of feet? Part of it is the fact that sea level has risen nearly 400 feet 
since the last ice age, but that's only part of it. To explain, I have to point to plate tectonics. We know that the land masses of the earth are like closely packed islands floating on a sea. They are colliding, scraping past, or diving beneath one another in a slow, timeless motion. The Nazca Plate is forcing its way beneath the South America Plate in a process called subduction, a force so mighty that it pushed up the great Andes Mountains. Now, here's the idea I want you to consider. The extraterrestrial impact of 12,900 years ago sent such shock waves through the South America Plate that the Nazca Plate, already on an inexorable path, suddenly relieved of tension, sank hundreds of feet and took with it what had once been an easy pathway to cross that great divide. That pathway hasn't been there in our recorded history, but perhaps it was available to people who lived before the great extinction event, people who were advanced enough to build walls like these.